Hi everyone, I'm Dave Giancola, joined again by Mike Trossel for another U.S. Open Classic finish. The year is 1992 and the U.S. Women's Open is being played at Venerable Oakmont Country Club outside of Pittsburgh, but this time it had the added challenge of inclement weather. Yeah, Dave, through 54 holes, good friends Julie Inkster and Patty Sheehan share the lead. Two of the top players in the women's game, they remain neck and neck late into round four. We'll pick up the action on the 17th hole. The skies begin to clear over Oakmont, Pennsylvania. And down below at the Oakmont Country Club, it is ready to resume play. The final round of the United States Women's Open Championship. Julie Inkster and Patty Sheehan dueling together are in the 17th fairway. About two hours ago, because of a severe lightning strike in the area, play was interrupted. A heavy rain came down, but just a short time ago, the wonderful ground crew here at Oakmont completed the task of cleaning off the 17th and the 18th green. And you are looking at 35-year-old Patty Sheehan of Reno, Nevada. She is two behind with a hole and a half to play. This her second shot on the par 4 17th. Desperately needing a birdie, she'll play this sand wedge from 86 yards. The ball sits on an old divot, but it sits pretty nicely. Shot. Giving herself a chance for a birdie here at 17. I'm Brent Musburger. You've just heard from Judy Rankin, Rhonda Glenn, and Steve Melnick are also here as the final moments of this U.S. Women's Open Championship continues. This is 32-year-old Julie Inkster out of Los Altos, California. These two women are extremely good friends, but yet neither has won the biggest prize in women's golf, the Open Championship. Yeah! Yeah! Staying right with Sheen. Just as it's been all afternoon, shot for shot, Julie Inkster and Patty Sheehan. After the rain delay, I felt more pressure would be on Julie Inkster with that two-shot lead. She had a lot of time to think about it. Now, meanwhile, in third place, Donna Andrews, graduate of the University of North Carolina, who now lives in Pinehurst. She's at even par for the championship. And this is a woman who could have been disqualified back on Thursday, but Frank Hannigan of our broadcast team called at the official's attention that she had violated a rule, and before she signed her scorecard, the score was corrected, and here she is. She can wind up with her greatest finish ever in a major championship, a wonderful story, and she's at the tee now in this great finishing hole here at Mighty Oakmont. And how about the crowd now that has come back and surrounding the green on up ahead? Keep that tee shot. Hang on. Finding the fairway there, Mary. Well, Mary was making the point. You have to keep the tee shot in the fairway here. The rough is brutal. It's very wet. And it would be a very difficult iron shot to the green from the rough. One of our Canadian competitors, Gail Graham, now at the tee. After a long wait, it's hard to get out and just hit the tee shot on one hole, but she has hit a good one as well. So they are both away at the 18th tee. Now we go back to our leader, Julie Inkster. Four under for the championship for the four rounds, two under for the day. This is for a birdie. Might have been a putt, Brent, that could have sewed it up for her. Now, if Patty makes hers, there'll be just a one shot difference with one hole to play. They have both wanted this title desperately for at least a decade. Both of them coming close. Patty disappointed three times, three previous opens, finishing second. Well, some long time ago now, Patty three putted at the 16th. You know, she felt like she really gave Julie a gift there. This would recoup that stroke and make 18 um, 
all the golf they want for today. She's in the best position from which to go at birdie. It's an uphill putt. Breaks to the left. It's just outside on the right. Green here at, at Oakmont, which has hosted six of the men's open championships, but for the first time playing host to the women here this week. And that is she in needing a birdie putt comes up with it at the 17th. And now a closer look, Steve, at the 18th. What a finish to this great championship. An uphill par four, 390 yards, made even longer by these recent rains. It'll be a long second shot uphill to a tabletop green with a flag stick in the front left hand portion. Lengthwise, it's advantage Inkster. Emotion wise, it's advantage Sheehan. Now, there's going to be a little bit of a wait because three groups are on the 18th right now. Don Coe who is in a tie for fourth place. But she faces her fourth shot here at this par for a finishing ball. There you see Don at plus three, and she's in a tie with last year's women's champion, Meg Mallon, who has completed her round at, at three over par. So Don Coe taking her time because this one worth status and money. Brent, she drove into the rough and she got relief from a tire track but had to drop it in, a, in sort of a bad lie. Barely cleared the bunker and pitched short here in three. She's played a beautiful tournament. Now one of the bright young stars on the LPGA. This is Michelle McGann. She's engaged to a fine football player out of the University of uh, Arizona, John Fina, who is a top draft choice of the Buffalo Bills. And meanwhile, you just have to wonder about this long wait for Julie Inkster. She hit her tee shot at 17, marched off. The siren sounded. She was forced to sit for an hour and 45 and now back at the 18th with Patty Sheehan having closed to within one shot. She must wait again. I know Michelle must be a little disappointed at some of the putts that have gotten away from her on the back nine but she's done herself a lot of favors this week. She's played a very very difficult golf course well. And, and I think she could have finished this tournament at par or maybe one under if she had had a little more luck on the greens. She can really play golf and she's going to be one of the great stars. It's need you were really impressed with her driving ability today weren't you. Well she's very very long. I, I think she's maybe the longest hitter I've seen on the, on the ladies tour and, and and she plays beautifully. Yeah. Oh. She hasn't managed these greens very well, and I think that will only come with experience. I think when she gets a few more years out here, when she approaches a, a course that has greens this fast, she'll be a little more patient. Most of the time, she has run the ball well by the hole when she's through putting. Continues because 
there are still some competitors left in the 17th fairway who can't come up yet either. You take a look back at, uh, at Andrews back there and Graham. And up ahead, it's Coe. This is for both. First. She is Brent. She's 163 to the pin, and it's obviously all uphill and carry. And the key on a shot like this is to make sure you catch the ball first. You don't want to hit it just the slightest bit fat. Catch that ball first, even if you hit it a little thin. Hold on. And I have to say, it's just absolutely amazing the people in the stands around the 18th Perfect. green. She has taken relief from casual water and she has a five on it. I think she caught that just a little fat. Now, meanwhile, that long, agonizing wait for Julie Inkster and Patty Sheehan. Patty Sheehan will have the honor as a result of the birdie on the previous hole. And what an excruciating wait for Julie Inkster. A few minutes ago, she felt that she, as that ball started to fall in the cup on 17, her own putt, that maybe she had it wrapped up. Putt lipped out, Patty Sheehan made, and now there's but one stroke difference. Well, these two friends were not talking while they waited at the 18th tee, and neither cracked a smile. These are the afternoons you remember forever. And uh, Steve Melnick, let's take a closer look. Let's take a look at these two very distinctive and different styles of Patty Sheehan and Julie Inkster swing. First, Patty Sheehan, she starts a club head first going back, and it gets a running start. As a result, her backswing is a little longer. Let's take a look. Beautiful extension into the backswing. Notice a straight left arm and the shaft of the club just past parallel to the top. Inkster, a little different. She starts the handle of the club what we call a one-piece takeaway. Great extension into the backswing. Doesn't break her wrist quite as quickly. The clip head is not running ahead of her arms like Patty Sheehan's. And as a result, the swing is not as long in the uh, backswing. Now on the forward swing, watch Patty Sheehan keep her head well back at impact. Julie Inkster more centered at impact. There's Sheehan's head well back at impact. 
Julie Inkster is back, but not as far as she ends. Great extension for both swings through to the finish. Very different styles, very effective styles. Now, this moments ago, we have one in for Bernie. Finish the championship, and now it's Donna Andrews who will be wrapping up a third place finish. Not too far. Well, Brett, she has a couple putts to deal with here. No matter what, she'll finish third even if she misses this, but pride is a big factor at this point. What she has done really has created more of a weight for Patty Sheen and Julie Easter in the fairway. to be settled. Well, there's been some discussion here as to who's away. They are virtually um, right across the fairway from each other. I believe that Stuart Block and Ann Beard are out here in the fairway with the USGA. And they us? have determined that Julie is away. There's a Julie, it's you. Delay at the moment as Ann Beard looks to see if Patty Sheehan may get a drop from casual water. Julie Inkster's round to go. Big advantage for Inkster to play first. I think so too, Steve. She's just on a very slight upslope. Has a good lie. 155 yards. Turn it. Get up. Get up. Fortunate bounce when the tee shot jumped just left off the hump off the bumper. This is your nearest one. This is over here. That's the near. Yes. Okay. So you can drop within one club length of that spot. Okay. Yes. Frank uh, Hannigan, explain this uh, ruling for us. Well, casual water is a temporary accumulation of water. Player is not required to play if the ball is in water or if her stance is in water. She gets what we generally call free relief. Now, she goes to the nearest point where that condition no longer exists, no nearer the hole. The referee has determined that, that you see the T stuck in the ground. That's where the referee said the nearest point is. Now, the net effect of that is that she goes from light rough into fairway. The rules allow that. The only appreciable difference in the lie here is that now the ball. Oh, that's, oh, that's okay. Okay, I thought that was the other mark. Okay. Now the ball rests in the fairway. It was in the first cut of rough, but she had a very good lie. Yeah. 
and virtually the same distance as Julie played 155, maybe 154. That's the club. I think up into this hill, a five iron's the club for Patty. Good. Turn now and take it right at it. State amateur in the next year. She was involved in a match with Julie Inkster that went down to the 19th hole before Patty finally won it. Now they have come to the finishing 18th hole. chances we get to win the women's open. Patty Sheehan's already had three and strangely enough this is her fourth opportunity. Inkster will be first to play really setting the stage if Julie happens to miss for a tie should she and make. tougher to have to make a putt to tie than it is to make a putt to win in this situation. Patty misses, there's no tomorrow. If she does make rent, there is tomorrow.
18-hole playoff tomorrow at 11 Eastern time. Mike, what a finish to regulation. Now we take you back out for the conclusion of the 18-hole playoff. Both women attended and played golf at San Jose State. Good friends through the years, and they will likely remain good friends after today, too. Here's Patty. That's okay. Sit. Uh, get out of here. She's in the rough. Well, as has happened in the past, her swing sometimes gets a little loose toward the end, especially when she's tired and uh, seems to be that way now. Well, by any measure, the 17th is a birdie hole. It's an uphill short par four of 285 yards. A fairway from the tee leaves the players a short iron pitching wedge, even a sand wedge to this sloping green. Beauty. Julie Inkster at four over par for her round. Had a she and one under. Through 16 holes right now, there is a five stroke separation. Brent, it's been amazing to look at the statistics of the two players through the first 16 holes. Inkster has hit 13 of 16 grains and is four over par. Sheehan's hit nine of 16 greens and is one under ball. Great scrambling. Well, isn't it very often the case in major championships, the putter makes all the difference. Judy Rankin, let me ask you a question. I have a feeling that Patty might be acting really elated. Were she playing someone else? in this stretch. She's playing against her best friend and it must make a difference in sort of her persona and the way she feels about it. Mm, well, I don't think she would be elated at this moment uh, regardless of who she was playing. She's um, had the experience of not having the cap on the bottle and she's not going to let her emotions get down until this round's finished. Both of these players are very emotional players and They've had a lot to control and a lot to cope with for several days here. I think that they'll come out of this um, uh, just fine because they've both had careers that uh, parallel each other. Patty, of course, has been a professional for three years more than Julie I think Inkster. Rich. Yeah, don't you? I think she's a good witch. Yeah. And her number of victories almost doubles that of Inkster. Only two away from the Hall of Fame. Julie, though, with a reputation for playing hard golf courses very well. Patty out of some light rough now, 112 yards, pitching wedge. been for a couple of short putts missed uh, this could have presented opportunity for Julie now 
the only way she could really make opportunity, I think, would be to hit it in the hole. Well, she's in the slope of that bunker face, did not go down. Not a particularly difficult shot from there. Well, Julie Angster can go in here with a sand wedge. Patty Sheehan and Julie Inkster come to the 17th green. Well, again, it is Patty Sheehan going to pitch it up onto this green. She's had five straight one putt greens, and she'd like to get close enough to make it six. case sometimes you get so down you can't concentrate that's her problem now is trying to focus on her business at hand and try to make a good putt here Julie Inkster may be down but uh, she has sincere feelings of friendship for her opponent here she said this morning in an interview that she believed that after this was over, she and Patty Sheehan would come out of it as even better friends. Yeah. Well, that gives you a little of your self-respect back anyway. Get a nice birdie there in 17. Her first of the day. A weak smile. <laughs> Julie Inkster picks up a couple. Now Patty Sheehan will hit after Julie Inkster and Patty leading by three. Here's Julie.
Our backdrop. Hattie Sheehan at even par with a three shot advantage closing in on her first U.S. Women's Championship. This has been a venue for champions. Six U.S. Opens have been held here. This the first for the women. And it's been so successful that you'd have to believe that down the road at some time. The women would come back here for. Another crack at mighty Oakmont. Just imagine now the. The feelings that. Patty Sheehan is trying to repress just a little bit having. Blowing that nine shot advantage down in Atlanta and just take turn and tempo now. Her dream right in front of her eyes. Now well, she's got 168 yards and one more good swing, and I don't believe she can avoid being a U.S. Open champion. but doesn't seem to be in any great difficulty back there will yeah 60 on top French can Good surely time. make five from back there I think that's the key here well I think Julie's going to try to take dead aim on the hole one last time Sixty-two, Jack Nicholas defeated Arnold Palmer for his first professional victory here at the U.S. Open. Tommy Armour won an Open here. Sam Parks Jr., Ben Hogan, Larry Nelson, and then how about Johnny Tell Miller into that round of 63? And what a feeling this is going to be for Patty Sheehan and Julie Inkster, who have brought this U.S. Women's Open Championship all the way to an 18-hole playoff. It's been great stuff. Watched Nick Faldo gut out a win last week in the British Open. And I think it's in a sense what Sheehan has done on this backside today. She has not played well. She's reached down and saved pars where Bogey stared her in the face. She comes here with a three shot lead. Look at the difference. That I think is the telling story here in this playoff today. 33 putts for Inkster through the first 17 holes. Sheehan with 26. A painful graphic for Julie Inkster.
the youngster trying to close out this championship by going birdie birdie. How ironic that would be on the two holes for Patty Sheehan birdie yesterday to force this playoff. Championship for Julie Angster. The one that's going to hurt for a time because she came so close. Didn't cut well today. her first United States Women's Open Golf Championship. And a hug with her dear friend, Julie Engstrom. 